Hi, I'm David Mossman. I'm an LCMS missionary and managing director of the International Lutheran Society of Wittenberg. And we're here at the Alta Latine Schule, the old Latin school in Wittenberg, Germany, that we are renovating to become a ministry center for the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod and our sister church in Germany, the Independent Evangelical Lutheran Church. So I'd like to give you an update on progress of the building, so let's have a look inside. Well, we're inside the main doorway to the building right now, and if you look off to my right, the first room we have here is called the foyer. It's really a reception room. It can be used as classroom space as well. Let's have a look. We've got a lot of work going on right now, but as you can see, we've got plastered walls. This is a pillar from 1564. This level of the building and the next flight up were built in 1564, so more than 450 years ago. This is the biggest room in the building, be the chapel. At this end, on this raised platform, will be where the altar will be, and back here, on an axis with the altar and the door is the baptismal font, which is symbolic of our entrance into the church through baptism. So this room also, as you can see, has been plastered. The ceiling is up. There's still a lot of work to do, but we've come an awfully long way since construction started a little over a year ago in this building. Now we're going into the bookstore. We have a bookstore gift shop here also for the public, uh, for also for students who stay here. This will be a study center as well as a platform for sharing the gospel with people here in Eastern Germany. You can see that we've got framework up for the glass walls for the bookstore as well as for the foyer. We have two floors that are mostly dormitory rooms. Again, part of the purpose of this building is to serve as a place for Lutheran groups to come, for study abroad programs, conferences, that sort of thing. So this is the first floor, or as Americans would call it, the second floor. So we'll take a look at a dorm room or two here, and then we'll go up uh, a little higher after that. So let's, uh, let's have a look. Go ahead, that's quite all right. Before we look at any of the dorm rooms, I want to show you the group room. This is sort of the lounge, the place that the residents, the guests in our building can come. We'll have a small library in this building, a reference library in this room. Uh, we also have a kitchen uh, where guests will be able to cook their own meals. So this is a, this is a room, a very much of a community room to, to foster community among the people staying here in the building. The dormitory rooms are mostly doubles, and this room is a, one of my favorites because it's a corner room that has lots of windows. You look out the window on this side, you can see the town church St. Mary's. This is the church where Martin Luther preached more than 2,000 sermons. It's called the Mother Church of the Reformation. And out this window, we can see the former parsonage of the church called the Bugenhagen House, named after Johannes Bugenhagen, who was Martin Luther's pastor. He's the pastor who married Martin and Katie. Every room has its own bathroom. So we'll have a, a very nice facility for study abroad programs, conferences, and that sort of thing. In addition to dormitory space for 22 people, we also have what we're calling the faculty apartment. This is a small apartment. So for example, if a professor from one of our universities brings a group of students to Wittenberg for study, this is the apartment he or she would have. It has the living room where we're standing right now, a small kitchen, a separate bedroom. Again, they'll have a very nice view of the town church, St. Mary's. Coming up the uh, stairway now, the new stairway to the top floor, they call it in German the Dachgeschoss, we'd say attic. Excuse me, hello? Up here, we have a large apartment which may become the director's apartment. We don't know yet exactly how it will be used. We've got to discuss that with the board of the International Lutheran Society of Wittenberg. 
And we have a couple of offices, one of which will be for uh, the old Latin school and what we're currently calling the uh, International Lutheran Center. I think since I did my last update, we've installed the heating system in the building. So we've got radiators throughout, hot water heat. This is one of two offices that we have for the building. Okay. Take a look here at the apartment on the top floor, apartment space for the, uh, probably for the director. We have an open floor plan with a kitchen, dining area, living area. It's got three bedrooms, small rooms, not big, but bedrooms nonetheless. One has its own bath, and we have a guest bath here as well. So I'm, I'm quite pleased with the work that the architects did on how the space has been used so well. As you can see, we have a beautiful facility. We're well on the way to having this renovated into our ministry center. But the Wittenberg project is much more than a building. The building is a means to an end. It's not the end in itself. The building is a place for Christian education and it's a place for gospel outreach. Eastern Germany, where we're located right now in Wittenberg, the birthplace of the Reformation, only about 15 to 18 percent of the people here even profess to be Christian. And we want to reach them with the gospel of Jesus Christ and that's one of the intentions of our building here to have programs for local people to reach them in a way that they can resonate to, but in the process hear the good news about Jesus. Also a place where Lutherans and other Christians can come to learn not only about the Reformation, but also about their own call as Christians to share the good news with other people. So we're trying to reach people with the gospel and reach people to share the gospel themselves. But there are still lots of opportunities to become part of the legacy of this gospel center here in Wittenberg, Germany. We have the Reformation 500 Club. Many congregations and schools have joined that with a minimum commitment of $500. For individuals, there's Sola Verbe. And we want to thank all of the individuals, congregations, and schools that have contributed to this project at whatever amount. So I encourage you to think about that, pray about it, and be part of what we're doing here in the birthplace of the Reformation. Mm -hmm.